be discussing these little windows I bought off of Amazon for about $40 each. They're high quality with 4 millimeter glass, which I prefer over plastic because the plastic scratches and I believe the glass doesn't allow as much noise pollution coming through. Also with the glass you can tint it. It's already slightly tinted as you can see, but not very much. These do open and they have a rubber seal. I prefer the high mount windows versus the lower mount ones. I did install a lower mount one here, one that's more typical. I don't like those because they're usually a lot larger and that allows a lot more noise pollution, um, thermal problems, heat and cooling is more difficult and people can break in easier. They can break this window and open the door and get in. Of course, they can do that in the front too. So more security mounting it up high. Also for privacy, I want this window here so I can enjoy the skyline and trees and all that. That's another reason why I like these smaller windows over the larger lower mount windows. The lower mount windows what you're gonna see almost everywhere you go now that things are getting more crowded you're just gonna well except in this case you're just gonna see typically something like that you're gonna see vehicles buildings asphalt man-made structures fences people that's what you're gonna see out this window but with these you're gonna see more like nature You'll be seeing skyline and trees, sunsets, sunrises, moons. This is an orthodox, untraditional method of window installation on a van. It's extremely rare to find other vans with windows at that location. They're usually mounted here and below. Usually here would be the highest that they're mounted, but that's too low for me. When I stand up in the vehicle, I'm six foot four, but I think even for many shorter people, when they stand up, this would be really nice. At six foot four, the view is here. A typical person, the view would be here, so that's pretty good. There's the moon, actually that early in the morning and there's uh, excellent privacy because when the windows are open people can only see in at your head level so if you're doing a wild thing they won't know you know, it's also a, a personal security feature. Well, in several ways, people can't break in through those windows at all. And also, you can actually get in trouble with the law for indecent exposure if, for example, you're in your vehicle and you have your lower mounted window like this one, you have that. This one's tinted limo tint, and that's why I don't want to use such dark tint. It's um, hard to see out. Uh, so, all right. So let's say you forget to close your window. You're facing this way. You forget all about it, and you want to undress to use the bathroom or whatever in your vehicle, or change clothing get ready to go to bed well especially if there are any children outside who see you do that they can 
can get you in pretty big trouble, possibly a felony, indecent exposure. It's unlikely, but it's possible. That's not going to happen with these little guys. I have one there installed correctly. And I'm going to install one there. And this one is installed correctly. Now being on the side, there will be a tiny amount of wind drag right there. When it's installed correctly. I think it's too insignificant to worry about that wind drag. Here's another good location. I don't want to install two more on each side there, the sleeping area, because when you're inside the vehicle, you cannot see uh, out those windows anyway, unless you're on the bed. But with the two back door windows, you can. This one that's currently installed right there has a drape in front. Still pretty early in the morning for him. So for some reason I got up early. I do have a skylight there where the roof air conditioner used to be. And the reason why I got rid of the roof air conditioner is because it was causing top heaviness and taking up space where solar panels could be. And I already have the nice fan over there and the roof air conditioner will not run off of solar panels, but this window air conditioner, now a door air conditioner, will run off of the solar panels all day long, 99% of the time, depending on the cloudiness and rain overcast. So that works when you need it the most, when it's sunny. As far as I know, nobody sells a size that is perfectly designed for this type of opening, which requires modification of the metal frame. I had to use very strong metal cutting tool uh, to modify the frame to get these windows to fit in there particularly to allow them to open and close this one's actually mounted inverted upside down see the way they're designed is the knobs go on the bottom not the top like that because on the other side there's a rain channel here so when I accidentally installed this one upside down the rain channel ended up being on top so I had to fill it in so when it rains it doesn't drip in here and then I had to uh, kind of tilt it to get the rain to come out so this is fine but it's not the way it's meant to be installed you can install it that way but beware of the rain channel on top. So first step is to remove these contrary plastic fasteners here, which mine are painted, so they'll be a little bit more difficult to remove. You have to use a screwdriver, twist it some weird way. The problem is, it's two pieces and both pieces move at the same time. So you have to just keep on messing with it to get it out. Once you get them out, go ahead and save, see, and then you turn it halfway. And then you want to use a screwdriver to pop it out and then kind of pull it out like that. You want to save these because they break real easy and you can use them in the panels where you have something broken. Wow, well, see how that's loose. So now I have an extra one to put here. I got tape over it for now. So I'll take that tape off and stick this in there to fasten. Uh, this is a not very good made in Germany product. 
often when you go to pry these out they break off so now you have to throw this away and when they break off you'll have to use pliers to force the removal oh boy just when I thought it was too complicated it gets even more complicated when they separate like this they're not broken they can be placed back together do all of this at your own discretion you are very ever so slightly weakening the structure of your vehicle by modifying the frame like this as a little bit of a warning but it's on the top part of the vehicle I can't imagine it being a safety hazard unless your vehicle flips over completely and crushes a tiny bit easier but how's that going to affect your driving position I don't know and this is tempered glass so that's not going to be a problem I don't see how the hell this is going to shatter unless a meteor hits this thing there are different ways you can cut the metal I like to use this heavy duty cutter it's more peaceful and quiet than anything electric it gives me maybe a little bit more control you want to cut a uh, slice there slice it there and then hammer this upwards it's going to fold inwards and then on the bottom you're going to cut out these two pieces here you're going to make a slice here and a slice there and hammer this downward so that the window we're dealing with will fit in there Demonst I'll try to demonstrate a cut with one hand to do one-handed but I, think I can do it it's not too hard it's like that and I've already done this side so I want to take a hammer and start banging this upwards bottom inwards this hammering is pretty noisy you don't want a pet inside your vehicle so I moved my dog over there in that grassy area so I take the hammer and just start banging the hell out of it force it see this one on this one I have it banged down pretty good kind of harder to tell now that it's taped up with but um, see the thickness there you can kind of compare see how it's bashed down only about an inch thick there and here I still got two inches so you want to just bang the hell out of this to make room for this window same thing with the top all right, so here it is a little bit further um, you want to slice here and here so that when you banging up on top it'll be easier beware of the sharp edges now that you've made cuts you can cut your hand open if you're not careful and for the passenger side this corner up here is is reinforced um, so you want to bang the hell out of this side over here to make more room to compensate for that and don't be afraid on the bottom here to cut a little bit more off the side and really whack it hard to get this to come down to thin this out okay it looks like I have the hole plenty big enough. This 
window is going to fit somewhere right there. Now you see on the bottom, these have to have enough clearance to completely drop so you can open and close the window. Looks like I did really good on the width, more than I have on previous installs. Now here's one of the trickiest, most important parts is now you're going to have to take this piece and draw an outline on the inside of that hole with a magic marker. You're going to have to cut this out here for the rain channel. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole on each corner of this template and then look on the outside to see how that, whether it looks like that's going to be a straight hole before I cut the whole thing out. Oh yeah, and once you draw your template, take the actual window, entire window, put it up and see how it lines up with where you plan on installing. My goal is to get it as high as possible and to the inside as possible because when I'm inside looking out, Once you get your four corner holes, I don't know what size drill bit that is, it's big enough that the jigsaw blade can maneuver around the corners. You'll want to look outside, put the template on the outside, draw a line on the outside, and cut from the outside because with a jigsaw that's going to be too hard to deal with these beveled out edges here. Now this is a wood cutting blade. You can see the teeth are large. You want to switch over to the small tooth blade like this one for cutting metal. All right, some tricks you need to know about making this hole. You already know the secret. Big hole on each corner. If you're not sure about location, you want to start out with tiny holes and look outside and then make the holes bigger once you're more confident. I've done this, this is my fourth time, so I was confident with this location. I think that's gonna be just right. Okay, I mentioned you're gonna have to cut this out here, okay? When you're cutting, go a little bit on the outside of your line to make it just a millimeter or two larger than you need because it's pretty difficult to fit the window in if it's going to be exact size or tight. See it when you're when you're going to caulk it or use and or use butyl tape where I'm running the tip of my nail it should be something like right there so that this piece will slide in that hole because it slides in this template like that. And when you're cutting the hole, wear hearing protection and relocate your pet somewhere else. Ah, look, I cannot use the jigsaw on the inside at all. It just won't. There's just not enough uh, flat surface area going outwards. So I have to do it all on the outside, which means I have to draw the template on the outside Okay, I drew it to the best of my guessing ability and I look to see if that line is horizontal with this aluminum box. It looks like it is, so it should look straight. It needs to match. Looks like I could tilt it clockwise a tiny bit. So when I cut, I'll keep that in mind to cut as a little clockwise. Since I already cut most of it, it gets really shaky at the end. Uh -huh. Oh, by the way, when you're cutting from the outside with the door closed, which I recommend, you're going to make a mess on the inside. So obviously I'm going to have to take 
my bed sheet off, shake it out really well, and uh, wash it. I've never seen a van that looks anything like this before. <laughs> it's very unique. I cut the hole uh, substantially larger on this side than what I needed to and so I want to test it so since my hole is not too big this window is actually very firmly fit in there and so therefore there's not a big need for me to screw in here these holes I'm not going to fasten this side but when I attach the frame on the outside I'm going to screw that in from the outside in after I put on some butyl tape to seal out the weather there actually this is the best cut I've ever made out of all four of these windows by far Look at that, it's very precise. And so there's really not need for butyl tape. I mean, uh, for, yeah, for butyl tape, I could just use some silicone, but I went to use it. I've had it stored for about a year and it's dried out. I cut the tube in half to see if I could salvage anything and it's just too dry so I ran out of silicone which would be more convenient than butyl tape uh, this will be just fine I'll just run this all along the edge there I don't know which one is going to work best I think they both work about the same probably silicone is more precise but the butyl tape will eventually, once I install the frame and screw it in, it'll press it in there real well and seal it just fine. That's what it looks like with the butyl tape installed at a 45 degree angle approximately. It helps seal out the rain. And then I slip this over and I'm going to use self-drilling screws just screw it right in there actually didn't need self screwing because this sheet metal is pretty thin I was able to screw directly in pretty easily except on this beveled section right here you'll want to drill a tiny hole with a drill first because this will just be slipping all over the place otherwise and I'll just paint these white they're originally some kind of gold color and you'll want to put a little bit of caulk around the edges be careful with that because if you put too much you're going to end up with a holy mess like I did over here don't do that you want to keep it clean looking like this already is so since there's butyl tape, you may not want to use caulk at all. But I recommend just a tiny bead around the edge of white caulk. Um, yeah, I know that sounded weird. Okay, so... And also right here, a tiny bead. Do not overdo it. Don't make a big mess. Because that's kind of hard to clean up once you get on there. Now I'm also going to put a screw here and here because I don't like that gap that's there and that'll help press that in there, close that gap up. Nice. Here's a gap. You don't want to put another screw there because that'll just end up cracking the plastic if you uh, 
and stripping the metal it's just not going to screw in uh, so you're just going to have to caulk in there and I'll, I may want to put another one here and there to close this top gap the bottom I'm not worried about just the sides and top that closed the top up really well all I need is a very tiny bead of caulk on top if any at all a little tiny bead here fill that up and it'll be completely done other than uh, painting these screws white all right this is the cleanest install window I've done the other ones are a little bit more sloppy than this mostly because I use too much caulk and cut the hole crooked or whatever and had to redo it so after doing three of them the fourth one went really well looks kind of weird with all those screws but that's just the way it's gonna have to be it'll look better when I paint the screws white and from a further distance it won't be so bad 14 year old tippy has been just chilling out over here in the shade all this time I'm just gonna let him rest while I finish this clean up this mess I made all right I'm getting cleaned up pretty good in case you're wondering what is this here this has several purposes this is actually an extra oversized um, pop-up tent for taking a shower outside that's what this is that stands up something like about seven feet high or so so my uh, propane powered shower um, I can use outside without uh, being accused of indecent exposure and also I think it provides sound insulation although I do have these boxes mounted there with stuff inside that also help provide sound and uh, climate insulation this helps additionally every little bit helps and so now I'm going to use tan colored tape to go around the edges here to keep that insulation from floating in the air or whatever and make it look better and I might stuff some insulation in there before I um, install the tape and then after that what we do is we cover this whole door with this is optional it's up to you if you want to do that with fabric such as this headliner I need to redo I need to redo all this headliner so I bought a new roll on Amazon I like the tan color it comes in a really long roll like this I think it's 50 inches or so and what I want to do is hot glue or some other non-toxic glue the fabric all along the door and trim it nice and neat it's a little tricky of a job to do it um, ideally I would have installed the fabric first before putting this window in I guess I don't know maybe not maybe the fabric should go on the outer edge since I'm not using screws that looks tacky exposed those holes so the fabric should go right over the edges here and be glued right on here and again I did not fasten this inside because um, it's such a good snug fit already and I think a few of the screws are holding it in from the outside that are coming into the plastic in a few places holding it in place it's not going anywhere there's no way um, most of these the glass window stays up by itself this one wants to fall a little tiny bit so if you want it all the way up you might have to use a bungee cord or something from here to here you don't want to put it on up here because when you open your door then all hell's gonna break loose 
Alright, here she is, finished on the outside. It looks straight. Lines up with the aluminum boxes on the right side. The left one I didn't have anything to line up with. Well, maybe the air conditioner. Which lines up with fairly well. Okay, from the inside. I haven't touched up with um, the tape yet. That's going to look really good after the, the, well the tape is optional. If you're going to use headliner material, you really don't need tape at all. But since I'm not going to do the headliner material for some time yet, at least several days, maybe weeks or months, because it's such a time consuming precision project, it could be that I'm just going to use tape for now. I have um, this special tape here. It's called, I think it's called 100 mile an hour tape. I got it out of Military PX Exchange. And it happens to be duct tape in the correct color. And you can see on this window I used it. It doesn't exactly match my interior but pretty close. And I'll just do the same thing there to make it look better in the meantime. But that wasn't too bad. That was worth it. It took just one morning to do that. A couple hours. But this is my fourth install, so it went better than the other three. This, each one is different. This one required cutting out here. I used a jigsaw to cut those loops on the bottom because the reinforcement was just so strong down here all right there got the tape installed that's a good view all right you need a glue gun or your preferred glue method to make these drapes or curtains. I prefer using uh, this stuff you can buy at Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, whatever. These are just uh, energy blackout curtains. Use a magnet. Don't want to use too weak or too strong. I'm using scraps here. You glue them in place. And then you allow enough overhang of the curtain and you will glue this over the top of the magnet use lots of glue in that spot it's gonna glue like that that holds the magnet in place because a lot of times the glue isn't enough and plus it makes it look better and then it'll stay in place just like that for stealth camping purposes you're gonna want the curtain to generously go way over the window because when your lights on inside that light will tend to creep through on the back doors it's not that important unless you have some big bright light on in the very back which is pretty rare in my case um, the front <laughs> funny dog what are you doing you doing you funny boy the front windows are in particular are the ones I need the curtains to be kind of tight oh professional mooner I made another video a trick about how to get this glue stick to attach to the new one you simply glue on the end and stick it on the end of the old one so when you press the trigger it'll move forward otherwise the old the new glue stick will just fall out the back too easily I gotta go give 
to be some attention. <laughs> this is the passenger side rear door window. I'm going to install the custom screen. The screws are on top and bottom. You can optionally put them on the sides with a magnet on the side of the screen. Currently this is just tape. Here are the magnets underneath this tape. That easy. It won't keep bugs out 100% unless the entire rim has firm contact, which in this case it doesn't, but it helps substantially. Okay, a little clip about the window tent. You can buy window tent in many places. I got this, this is the famous, I don't even know how to pronounce it for sure, Gila or Gila tent. I'm not 100% happy with it. It's, uh, to me, it's not the highest quality possible. You might want to go to a tent shop to get the highest quality possible or online. Because when you go to places like Walmart and Amazon, they're going to sell cheap crap, even if it says it's made in USA. You could go to Home Depot and Lowe's and get reflective tent, but I stayed away from it because it might make people nervous being reflective. They'll think it's either a surveillance video, one extreme being the US government, or the other extreme, some dangerous criminal stalking neighborhoods being reflective tent. That just makes people nervous and paranoid and more likely to call the police on you or the police to pull you over. Okay, this is 20% tent. And the reason I got 20%, I believe it's kind of a Goldilocks shade that's not too bright, allowing too much sun and heat in, and it's not too dark as to defeat the purpose of getting a window where you have a hard time looking out. Here's the contrast, no tint, 20%. So that's a pretty good shade, I believe. The most important tip perhaps I have on this would be realize this window design will not allow you to slide the wet tent on either side because the plastic housing is too tight you can slide it just a tiny bit under the top and bottom so what that means is when you cut it you can make it a tiny bit bigger width wise well depending on what your definition of width the short distance up and down or the long distance side to side horizontally um, cannot be longer than 12.2 inches and up and down I recommend 4.1 inches so you might want to write that down now pre-cut your tent to be 12.2 inches by 4.4 exactly no less no larger if you do any less then the little gap well you might have a big gap right there the transition between, I see that little bubble, that's the thing about, uh, this is really hard to, to do perfectly. That little gap right there, you want a really tiny gap like that. You don't want a big one. You need a tiny gap to prevent severe bubbling and wrinkles and things like that, but not so big as to distract from uh, the contrast of being light and dark. When you're looking out the window and you're gonna need a really clean flat surface I actually ended up lifting my bed up and holding the mattress backwards and then using my bed platform to cut the tent with a brand new razor blade make sure it's a brand new one And you're gonna need, um, I don't know where I have it, but not 
this, but you'll need a container similar to this and you'll fill it with baby shampoo, a few drops of baby shampoo and filtered water. I have a water filter there. And then you're going to use a lot of, well, you're, you're just going to have to read the directions on tent. That's a, a story for a different video. Anyone who has installed tent knows it's a very delicate process to keep the wrinkles and debris out. I have lots of experience and I still have a hard time with it. Or you could just hire someone to do it for you. Then you'll pay more and uh, you'll have to wait on them to do it at their leisure. All right, so that's the summary of how the tent situation is here. Again, I chose 20%. You can choose darker or lighter if you want. But you might end up redoing it um, if it's too light or too dark. I bought a roll from AutoZone for about $15. Like I said, I don't believe it's the highest quality on the market, uh, but it's working. And I ended up cutting many, many pieces, probably a dozen or so, just for these four windows because I had to redo it so many times, particularly because it was cut either too short or too long. And that's why the information I'm sharing you, the dimensions 12.2 by 4.4 is so critical that'll save you a lot of time trying to figure out. And that's because you can't cut a big piece and stick it over here and then cut it smaller because there's the bevel on the side and you have the, the frame on the outside. You can't do that at all on the outside. But on the inside, this bevel, this raised bevel won't let you pre-cut the correct, perfect size and also keep in mind when you cut your square, your rectangle tent pieces, you'll want to cut just a really tiny curve, just a tiny bit on the corners, not much. Don't overdo it like I did right there. Thanks for watching. Please take just a few seconds to like, leave a comment or suggestion, subscribe, and click on the notification bell, all conveniently located right under the video fast and free. Thank you.